Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We hear the praise of the Lord today. Yes. I said we hear the praise of the Lord today. Yes. We all need to come together, stand together, pray together. We just need to be together. Amen. Thank you. 
morning, church. How is everyone doing on this blessed day?
joy to the world. still 
receiving donations for the Urban League of Union County on the third and fourth Sunday. Pastor, you're going to be taking the lead on that while Brother Nichols is recovering. Is there anything else about that? Okay, he's got it. <laughs> good morning. Come on, give me a good morning. Praise his holy name. Amen. Thank you so much, this lady, for uh, taking care of the announcements again. Uh, let us be mindful. Do not just hear what Sister Lady said, but take the bulletin home and become doers of those things that are in need of your attention. Amen? Amen. As well, the Junior League of Summit offers every year the opportunity to apply for our seniors or anyone that is in the um, Summit area. They also cover Berkeley Heights, uh, Chatham, New Providence. And so again, if you know anyone that is a graduating senior, uh, they can uh, get this information or you can get it, give it to them. They can apply online, and it says here applications of grants run from $500 to $5,000. So again, we want to make sure uh, we take every opportunity to be part of that. As well, on next Saturday, that is December 23rd, from 12 p.m. to 2, there will be a holiday party for children ages 2 to 13 here at the church. And what you need to do is you need to uh, sign up with Brother Poole. It is part of the organization that he works with. And so uh, it is limited to 40 uh, children. So please see him and he will get, give you all the information about that particular Christmas party. Again, ages 2 to 13 years of age. It will be from tw uh, 12 p.m until 2 p.m. Amen? Amen? Now, again, this is a very important message. Uh, those that work in our kitchen, uh, you need to go through the uh, servesafety.com food handlers um, certification. I have all the information, or actually Sister Gaylord has all the information. Please see her. You can do it online at your own pace. But if you're going to be part of our kitchen uh, committee and be there while food is being done, you need to be certified. Now, this goes throughout uh, a multitude of different towns, so it's very easy. You go online, there is a cost to it, but again, you have a certification that is given to you through uh, the Westfield Regional Health Department, which covers Summit and other townships as well. So again, if you are one of those people involved with our kitchen, please take the opportunity, get the information, go online, get your certification. Uh, we want no problems with the health department and the city of Summit whatsoever. Amen? Amen. So let us be mindful as we get down towards the end. Uh, we are asking each and every one that want to participate in the time capsule. Time is running short. Please take the opportunity to be part of that, to put the names of those loved ones that you want in the time capsule so that when we get to that point and we put it in the ground, we're not going to be able to open it until it gets to the 100th year anniversary. Somebody in heaven is going to come to pass and say, well, can't you open it up? Can't you do all of that? No, when the time capsule sealed, it's sealed. Amen? So take the opportunity. If there's someone connected to our church, connected to you, this is a good time to remember them and remember exactly what God has done in their life and in the life of Pilgrim Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. We want to again thank each and every one of you. We want to say thank you. And we want to just say thank you to Brother James here who is back with us. Brother James is so And uh, he is filling in uh, in this time for Brother Nichols. Again, uh, I did go to the hospital. Brother Nichols is in JFK Hospital. And uh, I did speak with him. And um, again, I just simply want to tell you, keep him in prayer. Keep him in prayer for what he is going through. 
And we know the Lord's going to answer all of the prayers. Amen? Amen? He doesn't miss. He doesn't make a mistake. God's going to do exactly what God exactly. needs to do. Amen. And so we are grateful to each and every one. Um, got to do the scripture? All right. Come on and stand to your feet. And we're going, you don't even have to open your Bibles. Just, it's Isaiah 7 and 14. Isaiah 7 and 14. You will know this as soon as I say it. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a son. Behold, a virgin shall, con shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Thus ends the reading of our scripture for this morning. We turn it back over to the hands of our worship leader. It's prayer time, church. And as musicians play and the choir begins to sing something, at this point in time, we want to remember what this season is about. We want to remember that right now there are families out there who are not looking for things under the tree, but just something in their pantry. We want to remember that there's someone out there who is not worried about getting a new kitchen utensil, but just trying to find some place to sleep. We want to remember that there are so many things going on in this world, not only here in this nation, but nations all around, and yet he saw fit to allow us to be here today, to be of sound mind and body to be able to be here to stand, to be able to worship his name. So we are grateful right now. So as I pray publicly, pray privately, but not only for yourself, but for your loved ones that are not here today, for the people that you are going to pass throughout this week and that you passed last week. Let's not just have our own private prayers just for ourselves, but let's Begin to pray for the rest of this world. Yes, Lord. For those around us, for the things we see, for the things we hear. We as a church need to start gathering collectively yes, on thinking about what this season is about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about peace. It's about love. It's about thanksgiving. So as the choir sings, let us focus on what God has done for us. Right now, Father God, because there is no name higher than yours. 
Oh, I know Walmart and Amazon think that they have everything we need. People are running around to Target and to all the stores trying to grab the things that they, they think they need. But we know that your name holds it all. And we praise it right now. We praise it for the opportunities afforded to us right now that we even have the opportunity to think of giving and receiving physical earthly gifts. Because you gave us the greatest gift of all, your son. A child who was born to die for our sins. A gift that just keeps on giving throughout the year. Oh, some of those electronics are going to run out of power. Some of those toys are going to stop working. Some of those clothes are going to stop fitting. But God, we know that the gift you have given us will never cease. We thank you for everything that you are doing for us right now. Father God, we thank you for diagnoses that were laid upon us this year that have gone away. We thank you for the healing power that has brought us here, that has allowed us to stand here right now. We thank you for bills that were paid when we had no money in the bank account. We thank you for the gas and the car because we didn't know how we were going to get to that job. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you for protecting us throughout this year, throughout this school year. We look around and we see all the things that are happening, but yet you are still giving to us. Even when we are not deserving all the time. So we thank you right now, Father God. Oh, we're starting to look into that next year. And so we say thank you for all the things that we're going to walk into. Oh, we know that there is something that you have laid out upon us. We know that there is a path that you have placed in front of each and every one of us. Individually and collectively. So Father God, I ask that you just guide our feet throughout the rest of this year. Walk us into those blessings. Walk us into that grace. Walk us into that mercy. Let us be the people that you have destined us to be. Father God, we know that you are holding all things in your hand right now. We know that somebody out there right now is worried, but Father God, we know that you hold all power in your hand. Cancer has no power. Suicide and depression have no power. Addiction has no power. Anger and hate have no power. We are in a time of peace right now. We are speaking peace into this world right now. Lay down the guns and the bombs and the knives. Lay down those bottles and those drugs. We know that it's happening right now, Father God. So we say thank you for everything that you are doing, that you will do and continue to do. This is my prayer of thanksgiving. This is my prayer of peace. This is my prayer of gratefulness and praise. Because we have not always been deserving. And yet we still see fit. So we say thank you right now, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, Father God. Amen.
Did you? 
that when you live in God, you walk in God, you are in the Spirit always. And then that's why in the midst of it that you don't worry about a situation because you know God is going to show up on your behalf because God promised that he would always be with us. You see, when your enemy comes upon you, that's why you never have to worry because he's going to turn them into your footstool. That's why you never have to worry that when the world starts throwing darts at you, starts belittling you, he promised that if you put on the whole armor of God, that you shall be protected. Sometimes, some things are going to change one way or another. But this, I want to tell you, God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. People are going to leave your life one way or another. Things are going to change one way or another. But God has promised that he is always going to be with us. And that the promise means he wants to be there, not just when you want him, but he wants to be there every awakening and every step of your life. These words that are in the text, translated from in the name Emmanuel with the I, God with us, is more than just the presence of the outer man, but God is wants to be in the presence of the inner man. You see, God will stand at the door. Christ said, I stand at the door and knock. And if you open the door, I will come in and I'll suck with you. Let, let me put it where you can get it. If God is not in your life, it's because you haven't opened the door and allowed him to come in. You see, if you allow him to come in, every skeleton will be thrown out. Every bad thing that you did will be turned to right. Every step that you go the wrong direction, he'll put you back on a solid stand. You see, you got to let God in the inner man. God doesn't want to be on the outer man. He wants to improve the inner man. Because if the inner man is improved, the outer man is going to look better every day. Listen, if we can draw ourselves to this reality of God being in us and not just around us, God wants to be present in your life 24-7. He wants to be there whether there's 29 days in the month, 30 days in the month, or 31. He wants to be there in every storm. He wants to be there in every trial and tribulation. He wants to be there in every day of your joy, peace, and happiness. He wants to be there. If you let him in, he'll come in and he'll stay right there with you. Let me tell you, we limit God to what we want God to have. And we go through this thing. And all of a sudden, when we want God to do something, we want to call on him to do it. And we want him to do it right away. But if you've got God in your life every day, every awakening moment, every step you make, God is already there making a way out of no way for you. You see, we got to get to the point of stop limiting to God, to what we want God to be and what we want God to have. If you say it in this way, God said, I'm a jealous God. You'll have no other God before me. You see, let me tell you, your jobs are good. Your education's good. All of that is good. But God wants to be first in your life. You didn't get your education uh, just on your own. God made a way for you to get it. Hey, God made a way for you to get your house, get your job, get whatever you have. Put God first and watch what God will do for you. Think about it. Jealous, how jealous are you when someone and something gets between you and that which you really love? You see, my brothers and my sisters, we got to realize that if God's a jealous God, then we can have no other God before him. We can't put nothing in front of him. You see, some people are about making more money. So they'll work on Sunday or whatever their Sabbath will be in making more money because they want to buy more things. Well, let me tell you, Jesus paid a price that no man could ever pay. And he gave you something that no man could ever give to you. Let me tell you, put God first because God wants to be with you. Think about this. Everybody in here, 
everybody. You've cried tears. You've had heartaches. You've had pains. And you've had some other stuff I can't even say in the church. And let me tell you, you've had all of that. And yet God has been right there. When people have left you, forsaken you, turned their back on you, have I got a witness? God He wants you to know that. He wants to be with you. When nobody else will be with you, can I get a witness? God will be with you. Listen, here's, here's where you really need to know. He was there in your muck. And in life. He was there when you were in the pit of hell. He was there when you fell and you were on uh, the crooked road. You see, if we realize that God was there and he never left us when we were in that shape, we ought to be joyful. We ought to praise him, worship him, glorify him because he wants to be some people. Yes. You want them to be with you. <laughs> but they don't want to be with you. I ought to get that. You want some people to love you, adore you, worship you. You've done all sorts of things for them. You've gone out of your way for them and they turned their back on you. All God wants you to do is to lift up your hands, glorify him, praise him, tell somebody what he Emmanuel. Emmanuel with the I is translation, uh, trans, uh, transliteration of the origin of the Hebrew word uh, composed of Emmanuel. And then that means with us. When we get to the E-L at the end, that means God. Whenever you see L, that means God is right there. You see, when we deal with this, we got to know that God is with us, even when we don't want this. When we're in the wrong places, doing the wrong things, Emmanuel is still right there. Ah, somebody ought to say thank you. The difference between the transliteration and the translation is that one translates the uh, punctuation or pronunciation from one language to another, while the other translate the meaning of Emmanuel with the I or the Emmanuel, which points to the same meaning with two different spellings. Emmanuel and Emmanuel uh, may be translated as a name, but it is a biblical meaning that goes deeper than what you know. See, we want God where we want God. We forget God is omnipresent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the Bible says if you go to the pit of hell, yeah, God is there. Yeah, yeah. Climb the highest mountain that you yeah, can find. Yeah, yeah. God is there. Yeah, yeah. If you just take off on the best jet that you can find, go as far as you can go to the east or the west, can I get a witness? God is right there. Because he wants to be with us. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. You, you see, when we deal with this, it, it is God puts himself on display for us to know and to understand him through Jesus the Christ, which is the coming Emmanuel. You see, my brothers and my sisters, when we look at what the Old Testament presents, it presents prophets of men like I said, it, it, it gives us women of the Bible that God uses in there to speak to us. But, but when people look at you, can I, can I just tell you, they, they got to see the God in you. Yeah. Not the God on the outside of you. You can dance all you want up and down the aisle. You can sing all you want in the choir. You can preach all you want behind the pulpit. But they got to see the God in you. When they see the God in you, 
It's different from the God that's on the outside of you. You, you see, he's ordered your steps. Yeah, right. He's ordered your talk. Where you should have beat them down, you just pray for them. But where you should have struck them down, you just say, Lord, I lift my hands unto. You, you see, there's a difference when God's on the inside of you. It's much deeper than, than what they saw there. They just wanted somebody in their presence. But you got to have and you got to want God walking in your life, ordering your life, doing everything he is. Word says that God Himself is going to give you, and He's going to give me uh, the world of sign of His undying love. There's something about God that ought to stir us to the bone. That there's something that He was willing to save a wretch. He was willing to send down what was him in a transformation of flesh and blood. Uh -huh. He was willing to make his son a sacrifice for sinners such as we. Amen. There's something about a God that you ought to stand back and look and say, what is it? I heard God say, what is it that he would be so mindful of who I am, that he would do such a thing like this. Think about this. After all the mess in the world, and can I get personal with you? After all the mess in your own lives, in my life, after all the problems we've caused, after all the things we've done, God still wants to be with us. Oh, if you don't get nothing else today, you ought to shout that God wants to be with me. After God, his creation has put God through. Get some out, lady. They're in mud pits. They're down so deep in the mud pits they can't even move. Not only is that, but they start trying to tell somebody about, and then they take away the straw so they can't make the brick. Let, let me tell you. But he picks them up. Yeah. Sends a stammering man named Moses. Moses, just go tell Pharaoh that I am such you. And tell him, let my people go. Yeah. And I, if you knew what that meant, you would shout right now. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Told Jesus, go down here and tell Satan, let mine. Oh. Yeah. If you think about how good that means that, that you were once shackled by Satan. You were gripped up by him. You were in a stronghold. But Jesus said, yeah. after all that, he still wants to be. Yes. Yes. That ought to tell you that, that nobody's got to tell me that I'm worth something. Just the fact that God wants to be with me tells me that I've got some worth. I've got some value. I've got something. Tracy, I, I, I made an image. I've got power that I never knew I had before. I've got some things that, that when my enemy come upon me, they leave me alone because I got God. I've got the Lord himself with me. Not on the outside, but, but he's on the inside. You see, you can't convict me, but God can convict me because he's working on my inside. He's working to change my inside so that my outside looks good too. You see, this Hebrew word, uh, Adani, uh, he will do it without even being asked. We, we couldn't ask him. We couldn't ask him uh, why we couldn't because we were sinners. We, we were sinners and, and, and we were all messed up. You see, I tell you just say it so, so it's on me and not on you. I was all messed up. But because of the God we worship, because of a God that cares, and a God that he'll take rides and turn them in to royal garments. He'll take you out of the pit and put you in. Oh yes, he will. He'll do it. He, he'll do it. And you know what the problem is? When we rejected him, he did it anyway. 
y'all didn't hear that you didn't hear it. When, when, when in fact people right now reject him. Men are trying to fight wars instead of if you believe in God, let God have his way. Let God.
Jesus Christ. This is an apparent uh, from the fact that this child is later identified as a mighty God. Isaiah 9 and 6 tells us, and further, that it inspires the apostle Matthew to declare the meaning of what Isaiah 7 and 14 has told us by acknowledging that it is fulfilled by the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know this message speaks of Jesus because it says he will be known as Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. This is the truth of Jesus, in fact, only as a little uh, title that's given to him. Emmanuel speaks both of the deity of Jesus, of God with us, and his identification of the nearing to men, God with us. Christ is God with us. Jesus is called Emmanuel, or God with us. He is incarnated, God with us. It is by the influence of the Holy Spirit, God with us. It is by the life that Jesus lived, God with us. It is by the sacrifice of the day, God with us. It is by the preaching of his word, God with us. It is in the prayer that he prayed, God with us.
Amen. out 
happened in, in uh, Casa Ariel and Wallace Chapel. So again, I will know by next week. I will know by next week um, whether we are doing joint. I did this. I, I got you. I'll say it again. Okay, thank you. Um, and so again, I will let you know uh, how we're going to do that so that we can do that. Rep. Dean will be here on fifth Sunday. Again, we want to uh, be part of it next week. It's fourth Sunday. Uh, again, let us, it is Christmas Eve, let us come in our nice, beautiful gala, red, purple, green, yellow, whatever it is. We want to be blue, whatever you want, whatever color you want to put on. We want to celebrate what God is doing by being with us through Jesus Christ. Amen? Let us be mindful of all of that. Um, there was something else. Sorry. Yes. She's got, she's got those walking ears. That, that's a big story. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's why it's good to have young around you. Amen. Um, 219. 219 is how many families we fed since we've opened up our pantry.
Trust God in everything you do. Trust God in everything you do. Amen? Amen. Listen, if we do that, you're going to see some difference in your life. Amen? Amen. We, we want to implore all of you that have children, grandchildren, nieces. Let's get our kids back in the church. Amen. They, they know some stuff. And, and the stuff they know ain't what they should know. <laughs> Amen? If, if we do not, if we do not bring them up the way the Bible says, it's going to be our fault. Amen? 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 I think I'm done. Oh, for Russell, today your birthday? Is it your birthday? Yesterday was your birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Now, God, how do 
your way. Touch those people that do not believe that you're in their presence. That you've got all power to do everything except for faith. Right now, God. Somebody needs to be the bigger of those that are creating hope. So right now, God, right now, Lord. in the name of Jesus, in Jesus name. the only name that can make every knee bow and every tongue confess, right now, God, in the power that you created us in right now, God, touch those that are going through trouble. Touch those that are going through mental illness. Touch those that are feeling all alone right now. That they'll feel your presence with them and let them know that you are with them. And you want to be with them. Right now, God, give us the wherewithal to spread the word that you're with us. In everything, in every way, in every possibility, you're right there with us. Now, God, we're going out into a world that's dying. Give us marching orders and be ambassadors to a dying world. To tell them right now that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto you except by it. Let them know that this is not the season of Macy's, of Amazon, of ShopRite, of, of whoever. But this is the season of Jesus. This is the season of Emmanuel, God with us. That we'll praise you, glorify you when we wake up. That we realize that every day you've given us a present of hope, yeah. peace, and happiness. Now unto him who can hold us faultless before the everlasting throne. May his love rest rule and hit, uh, abide henceforth and forevermore. And all that love the Lord say amen. 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 And give him that praise.